Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a go funny lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Continue subscribing, liking, commenting, and everything. Um, thank you very much for supporting us. Please continue to motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. I will appreciate. Just drop the name on the link down below. i be more than glad to react to it. So today, I'm going to be reacting to um five things you should do every day Omar Suleiman motivation Islamic lectures um so without wasting time let's get into the video you know honestly I wanted to just kind of leave everyone with some practical tips because Allah tells us in the Quran that those who seek huda guidance will be guided here's the thing if you want to change Imam al Ghazali, rahimahullah, he says something beautiful. He says, "Ida al maru kana tlahu fikrah, fa fi kulli shayin lahu ibrah." When a person is really deeply involved in some sort of thought, when something is is heavy on his mind, heavy on his heart, then everything around him will be a guide towards that thing. You love Allah subhanahu wa taala. Everything around you has meaning all of a sudden. Every single thing. You really have a sense of urgency, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you the way to change. Because you know what? At the end of the day, it's different for everybody. All of us have our different demons. And every single problem has its specific solution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who guides you to that. As Imam Hassan al Basri rahimahullah said, Rahimallahu imra an shagalatu ayubuhu an ayub al nas. May Allah have mercy on a person who is too busy with his own faults to be worried about anybody else's faults. A sense of urgency. So I just typed up five things. These are five tips if you want to take notes. The first one, eliminate the poisons in your life that aren't allowing you to change. And essentially what that teaches us is that the Prophet wasallam, he taught us about this heart, this qalb. Imam Al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says what? Your qalb is a space. You fill it up with you fill it up with anything else. You're not going be, you're not going to have any space for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in there. The problem is not the qiyam. The problem is that you're doing the things that will stop your qiyam from being accepted. The problem is not your du'a. The problem is what you do after du'a and before du'a. That's the problem that you're having. Eliminate the stains from your life, and then you would find that you naturally would start to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because once your heart becomes clean and honest, your heart starts naturally inclining towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your fitrah is to incline towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So eliminate the things that corrupt your fitrah. Number two, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. You know some people subhanAllah, they wait for really, really, really bad things to happen. They wait to see the consequences of their sins before they change those things. An ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. What happens is that shaitan claws you, he digs you into this hole. Or you dig yourself into this hole. It's a lot harder, harder to climb out of that hole than to have taken care of it in the first place. Put aside the flaws you already have, don't go any further. Imam Al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says that every single action that you commit, every single sin that you commit goes through the following stages. Number one, it's a fatra, passing thoughts. Number two, after it's a passing thought, it becomes a fikrah, settled thought. You start thinking about it. Hey, what about that? After I've entertained the thought enough, shaitan has told me about how great the benefits of this action are going to be. And essentially, we commit sin because we think that it's going to serve some sort of benefit to us. We think it's going to give us some sort of pleasure. And it usually does for a temporary time. Then it becomes a niyyah. I have the intention to commit that sin. After I have the niyyah, the intention to commit that sin, once I've made the intention to commit something, nothing's gonna stop me. Then it becomes azimah. I'm determined to commit that sin. No matter what stops me. Right? At first I was very hesitant. Now I'm full force. And that's why once you have azimah, it becomes amal. It surfaced, it became action. Once it becomes action, it becomes ada, It becomes a bad habit. Once you have a systemized sin in your life, 
trust me, that will kill your dua, that will kill your salah, that will kill your, uh, your opportunity to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why from the dua that we, that we make, Allahumma naqina min al-dhunubi wal khataya allati takbisu dua wa naqina min al-dhunubi wal khataya allati tanzilu al-bala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify us from the sins and from the mistakes that cause our du'as to be cut off. And that caused the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to descend upon us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa tells us that at one point you become defined by your sin. Just like at one point you become defined by your good deed. In Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that a person would tell the truth so much, he would be so truthful, hatta yuktab Allah siddiqa. Till he's written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a siddiq. Not that he told the truth one time. This is a truthful person. This is someone who's truthful in his faith. And then a person would lie so much, not that he told the lie here or there, until he's written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a kathab. Your name with Allah is a liar. Subhanallah. You become defined by your traits. You become defined by your deeds. Number three. Anyone ever heard of the acronym KISS? Keep it simple sunnah. Keep it simple sunnah. We can all agree upon that. Rasulullah tells us that when a person goes to his grave, but when you go to your grave, what are the things that you're praying for? What are the things that you miss? What do you really want? He would come back and wish he could just offer two rakas. Just two more rakas. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might forgive him with those two rakas. Find something small in your life that you're capable of doing and stick with it. Eventually that will accumulate. Eventually that might be the cause of you entering into Jannah. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, what is Aisha radiallahu anha narrated? That the most beloved actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, adwamuha, and qalla. You know, the most consistent of them, even if they're very, very, very small. How much time do you waste of your life that you could be planting trees and palaces in Jannah? That's changed. Keep it simple, sunnah. Have a wird, not one of these wirds that's made up by some shaykh somewhere that you're going to be doing. No. Go to the sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, and that's sufficient. Find the things that he used to do on a daily basis sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and incorporate that in your life. Number four, think progress. Why do I say this is so important? Kaw shaytan gets you. He makes you think backwards. Is it halal to fast if you don't pray? Why don't you start praying and add that so that your fast can become validated? SubhanAllah, think Progress. Don't think backwards. Shaitan always pulls you this way. Shaitan always pulls you this way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always calls you forward. Make progress. There's one person who always does it for me. Imam Siraj Wahaj, Hafidhullah. One lecture I found, he did this khutbah in the 80s called Islam Means Progress. It was my cassette. I popped it in my car. Alhamdulillah, I don't drive a new car. Islam Means Progress. One of the greatest lectures I've ever heard in my life. Number five. Um, he converted to Islam in the Amarat actually, in the UAE. He said, on your way to becoming a good Muslim, don't become a crappy human being. Becoming a more religious person should not make you a jerk. It should not make your character worse. It should not make you more condescending towards people. It should make you, mo make you more humble. It should make you more loving. It should make you more compassionate. It should make you more caring. You know, subhanAllah, Rasulullah tells us what? What's going to be judged on the Day of Judgment? Your khuluq. That's the heaviest thing. That's the heaviest thing. Your character. And when you have nasty manners, that is a reflection that on the inside you are actually devoid of iman. We look at the woman who the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, who prayed a lot of prayers, fasted her fasts, did all the rituals, did all the good things. But she was abusive to her neighbor. Rasulullah ﷺ said, لا خير فيها هي في النار. There is no good inside of her, she's in hellfire. There is nothing inside of her that's good. All of that was, was superficial. What really counts is when your inner beauty changes. That will reflect with your outer beauty too. And that's why Rasulullah taught us when we look in the mirror, we say, Allahumma. We ask Allah for change every time we look in the mirror. When you change your clothes, you ask Allah for a different type of change. What do you say? Allahumma kama ahsanta khalqi The way you beautified my appearance You know, you gave me these clothes You allowed me to change into this new pair of clothes You created me, you know, with, with some form of symmetry What do you say next? Ahsin khuluqi 
correct, beautify my insight. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who experience real change, who search for guidance and who are guided by His mercy. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khayran. Aqulu qawri hadha wa astaghfirullahi lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I love this video. I mean, the tips are amazing. How are you going to... The minute you're elevated in life, you feel like you have to be the worst people to the people that have been there with you all these years, there for you through everything. People need to understand you don't have to be a bad person to prove that, yes, you've been elevated in life. You don't have to be the meanest person in the world just to show off that you're no longer where you used to be. And also, it's very, very important for us to have clear minds when it comes to our relationship with God and everything else generally. You can't continue feeding yourself with all sorts of things and expect change in your life. You really can't. Mindset really plays a very, very big role in our lives. Our actions also play another role. It's all about our actions. Don't just be a, uh, someone who speaks. Talk less. Do more actions. You know, these tips speak, speak for themselves. Let's just be good people, not just on camera, not just uh, in classrooms, but good people around our loved ones, good people around each and every one. Let's not um, act different according to who we're dealing with. Let's be nice to everyone. Let's be true to ourselves. And the only people or the only person that can save you is actually you. No one will ever tell you to wake up and pray. No one will ever tell you to wake up and do good. No one will ever tell you to ask God for forgiveness. No one will tell you anything. It all depends on you. It all starts with you. So be the first one to push yourself. Then others can come in and support the good that you're trying to do in this world or follow these tips. Let me know what you guys think about these tips. If there's any tips you'd love to share, drop them down below. If there's anything you want me to react to, give me the name or the link down below and I'll be more than glad to react to it. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.